What is up guys? Sophia here back with another topic. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all of my content. And don't forget to check the description box because I always put a lot of stuff in there, such as my books and products and everything else. So I'm super excited about this topic because what we're going to be talking about today is your issues. Well, not y'all issues, but you know, you might have some of these issues, but the issues that women teen, tend to have when it comes to men, because I have been um, posting a few videos where I have talked about women and sometimes how we come across. And I'll put some of them in the description box. But overall, I want to do an actual case study on Married at First Sight Karen so that you can see exactly what this looks like. Because I think a lot of women are guilty of just being guarded and shut down and it can come across as very you know mean and then subconsciously you're running away a good guy so miles and karen are from married at first sight he was a great guy and she was actually in danger of losing him because of her attitude so the first issue that she had was that she made judgments too quickly he's not really my type I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I watched all his little Instagram stories. Very emotional. So married at first sight, typically you don't know who your spouse is going to be. She accidentally found out who her spouse is going to be. She looked at his Instagram and all of a sudden, because she saw his Instagram, he was automatically dubbed not her type by her. And she basically had this little breakdown before the wedding saying he was too emotional to this, to that. And the point of all of this is like, you don't know this person. You have not met him. You had not have a conversation with him. You cannot just look at a guy and make judgment and look at some Instagram photos and try to use your third eye to come up with, you know, what you think he is or who you think he is. Sometimes we shut good men down because we stereotypically look at them and feel that they're not necessarily our type when they could completely be our type. Or sometimes we maybe need to um, date outside of the box. And I have a video on that that I'll post down below. Sometimes our type, if they're not good to us or they're not getting us into a relationship or they're not giving us the relationship that we want, then perhaps we need to go outside of our type, right? Because if that's not working for you in the past, then why continue to date the same type of men or get mad that a man is not your stereotypical type when the fact of the matter is your type is not what worked for you um, before. So with that being said, Karen had a history in a long term relationship with her with her boyfriend a past boyfriend that had cheated on her and got another girl pregnant so that's why I'm like don't necessarily get caught up on your type a and b more than anything you know this is what develops past trust issues within women is when they typically have um bad relationships but the thing about that is that you need to heal from that because you can't punish the new man for what old men did to you and so you can kind of see that she judge Miles which was her husband based on the past relationships and even though he was a genuinely nice guy she just could not move past that he was a nice guy I always had this fear that like he was so inclined to like be the good guy and things like that that I'm like are you really being the real you but it's not a terrible thing if somebody's trying to be accommodating because that's what they've learned she just really felt like he wasn't nice or she was looking for little things or little reasons or whatever the case may be f to discredit him when really he was trying to do stuff for her. This morning, made his breakfast, had a little breakfast sandwich, sent Killer off to work, had a little lunch for her, really washing the beans all day, you know, clean the bathtub for her so she can take a bath and she gets home and uh, just get, get, her, get her what she needs. He was trying to show her that he cared about her, trying to be appreciative. And she basically kept trying to call him, you know, inauthentic or fake when really that was his genuine personality. So oftentimes you might be shutting yourself off from a good man because you feel because of your past issues and the type of men that you are used to that this man can't possibly be this great and so now I'm just going to try to find things that are possibly wrong with him when the fact of the matter is there's nothing there it's just your past insecurities creeping into this relationship and now you are punishing your new husband so the third is undermining his masculinity but as I listen to your language it's all about your needs. And I do know you've said some things in the past that would not encourage openness. You felt he had feminine traits. I mean, if I were a guy, that would freeze me up. 
So I think we need to stop this whole what masculinity what masculinity does and does not look like. I think sometimes when women get into this whole masculinity role, it can get into toxic masculinity, which women feel that men must behave a certain way that's not necessarily healthy. And in all actuality, it's toxic. Because one thing that she said, and her husband kept saying, I'm a man all day, every day, but because he openly expressed his feelings and because he openly communicated she was like well that's feminine or I'm just not used to a guy being so emotional or non-masculine none of those things make him non-masculine you have to understand that telling a man that is disrespectful because he's just literally trying to communicate his needs to you which is completely normal tell you how he feels which is completely normal but it because she wasn't used to that or because you may not be used to that it's like you now take his his openness and his willingness to communicate and his his willingness to kind of cater to your needs and you're calling him feminine and these things aren't necessarily feminine these are very good traits to have so oftentimes we need to stop the oh this man needs to tell me to shut up or be very dominant with me or if he's not super controlling then that doesn't mean that he's a man because you know those type of things are very toxic and these are not desirable attributes to have and sometimes we need to stop associating manhood or masculinity with some of the toxic traits and be open to some of the more positive traits that a man has and not necessarily say because he is emotional or more communicative that that makes him feminine and you daggone sure don't need to tell a man that he's feminine because it's very disrespectful and especially when he's not doing anything negative so the fourth is being shut off I think a lot of women tend to think that oh this man needs to push through my issues and push through my stuff and I'm just going to be shut off and not give him anything. We've really struggled in getting to actually know who each other are. Um, I'm a much more like external type of person so like you'll right, see right. My, you'll see my effort you'll hear me talking you'll hear you'll see me trying to, to figure things out try to get to know you and that's just not the way that, that Karen operates. And, and, and we've talked about it. I've been like, yo, I don't feel cared about. I don't feel cared for. I don't feel like you want to be here with, with me. So the downside to this, and I understand that people are guarded and they need to work through their own issues. But as I said before, no man should be punished for your past issues, first of all. And second of all, no man wants to feel unwanted. With Miles, he was a more physically type of affectionate person. He would want to hold her hand or give her a kiss on the cheek and she would just flat out walk away, not touch him, ignore him and all those other type of things. And I said this in one of my last videos, putting your in a position to be chased because I think a lot of women feel like oh well he needs to chase me he needs to show me but the caveat to that is you need to show something you need to give something because nobody wants to keep chasing you and pulling down your walls and all of this type of stuff and they're not getting any emotion or anything back from you and they're feeling unwanted and it's like that's not a chase at this point this is just disrespectful if a man is trying to initiate some form of affection or initiate some form of emotion or initiate a conversation with you and you're just shut off he initiated his part which is which is the chase which is trying to get to know you which is trying to initiate physical affection in this case a kiss a handhold and you shutting him off is you not being receptive to the chase so why would someone continue to chase you if every time they communicate with you they feel shut down because nobody wants to be in a relationship or a situation where they are unwanted and they are the ones always giving or being emotional in the relationship. Which brings me to my last point. And this goes to show with intimacy. And intimacy does not always have to be se have to be sex. And you know that I always say that, right? When we talk about intimacy, this is showing a man that he is wanted or that he feels needed, right? I come in the house and you are excited to see me. You want to be around me. You want to give me a hug. You want to give me a kiss. Um, you want to come cuddle up with me on the couch, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, it's, and, and for her, that level of affection, intimacy is like the hardest thing for her to do. And so this could mean, oh, kissing somebody, saying thank you when they do stuff for you, 
wanting to hold their hand. And I think sometimes women can be very rigid when it comes to their intimacy. Like, oh, don't touch me. I don't want to hold your hand. Don't kiss me. Don't this, don't that. Especially like people like Karen when she has had past relationship issues that didn't necessarily turn out so wonderful in the past, such as the ones with her boyfriend. And it's like you automatically become guarded and you don't want physical affection from anybody because now you feel shut off from any form of intimacy and it's like the bad thing about it is that she didn't see anything wrong with it there is something wrong with it there is something wrong that if you are in a relationship and and a man is around you and you don't want to show them that you appreciate them or every time they do stuff for you you're like well fine that's what you're supposed to do instead of saying oh thank you that's very nice or if they are leaning in to kiss you, you just turn your face and walk away and be like, whatever. Or if they try to hold your hand, you just smack, you know, their hand away. You know, nobody wants to feel like, cause a relationship is different from a friendship. You know, no, we don't expect our friendships to try to kiss us and do all this other type of stuff, right? But if they're in a romantic relationship with you, especially if they're your husband, yes, they do expect some type of physical affection. They do expect some type of appreciation. Is there any intimacy that's going on in your relationship now? None. There's no sex. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, what are we talking? Are we hand holding? No. You guys do not hold hands at all. No. Have you guys kissed? Before in life? Yes. No. Each other. Or for you to show them that you care for them beyond the basic surface level or friendship that you would show anybody else. So treating your significant other like a stranger because, you know, you're guarded or you have your guard up or you or you keep saying, well, I'm not physically affectionate. Sometimes we have to compromise and we have to show those things for the other person because nobody wants to continuously put themselves out there in order to receive, you know, love or emotion or affection from you and to be rejected. All right, guys, I definitely hope that this helps you out. And if you are guilty of some of these symptoms, no worries. Sometimes we all are. The best thing is to be aware and the best thing is to get rid of them because at the end of the day, just like Karen, you could possibly run or be running good men away. And then you're sitting up there. There's no good men. There's no good men. And really, there are a lot of good men. But the way that you are behaving towards them is making them not want to engage with you. So you don't want to be running off good potential partners because of your own issues. All right, guys, thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys another day, another time. Bye, y'all. Not ready for the show to end? It doesn't have to. You can head over to my site where you can read hundreds of articles. And also, you can feel free to shop my store where I have all of my products for sale. And last but not least, for even more video content, feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I talk about a wide array of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay blessed.